my dear Kristen. People split up all the time. I just never thought it would happen like this. Not to us. So I sit here, as I have so many times, and though I know I'm writing this more for therapeutic reasons because I know you will never read this, it does help to get these thoughts out on paper. Otherwise, they all just keep going around in this hyperactive mind of mine. But of course you know that about me. Today is September 26th, which would have been the four-year anniversary of our first meeting. It has been over a year now since you left me. Well, one year, 15 days, but who's counting? I do think that I've finally come to terms with the fact that you're not coming back to me and that this is really over. I think I'm past the phase where I just lie on my bed and think of everything I could have done or said differently and hope that you will call or text. The silence is really the hardest part. I think I'm doing okay. Well, getting there at the very least. Mending a broken heart is a process, so they say. I mean, I've started going out again. Progress, right? I even met a girl. My friends tell me it's a good thing, a real positive step in the healing process and such. And, and don't get me wrong, she is a very nice girl, just different. It's strange. Like your mind, your muscles have a certain memory to them. You, you do something so many times it just becomes second nature. You don't even think about it after a while. It's what allows us to tie our shoes or play an instrument without a second thought. You spend a long enough time with someone and your bodies memorize one another. The shape of their hips, the cadence of their breathing when they sleep, the way their fingers connect with your own when you hold hands. Being with someone new is like driving someone else's car. Nothing works quite how you expect it to. Everything is just a little bit off. It's awkward and a bit scary. Everyone always says time heals all wounds. Well, the only thing time has done is to allow my mind to dwell on things even more. Sometimes I think my mind is my own worst enemy.
You used to say I spent way too much time in my head. I remember how you would sit and listen to me go on about different science facts I'd read or random astronomy trivia I would teach you as we went for walks in the city while looking up at the moon. Do you recall the time I told you of the branching universe theory and the idea of a multiverse? It states that there are an infinite number of parallel universes that contain every possible set of circumstances based on each decision we make. If this is true, it would mean that somewhere there may very well be a world in which I understood what some of your seeming melodramatic actions meant, and I reacted differently. Conceivably, there is another world in which, on the evening of March 31st, I came over to your place and we talked. And you helped me understand things better. One in which we are still together and still going on moonlit walks or to a noisy nightclub with your friends. I often find myself in your neighborhood for one reason or another. Every time I am, I have the silly notion to knock on your door, which is stupid because I know you will not answer it for me. I wonder if you even think of me anymore. Because honestly, truth be told, I'm not really doing well at all. Life is actually pretty miserable without you. I know that I've gone this whole letter without using the one word you longed so deeply to hear from not only me, but everyone in your life. Looking at it objectively now, I'd say that I still love you. And in some way, I know I will never really stop. I'm not sure I'll ever understand why you did what you did. How you couldn't see what you meant to everyone. To me. I just hope that you're at peace now. And that you found whatever it is you were looking for in this cruel life. because I miss you more than ever. Thank you.